I have a very imperfect piece of parchment here. I'm going to try to show you some bad things that can happen. Right here is a knife cut. I also have some areas in here that I think are going to cause some fuzziness. So I am just going to take my metal nib see how that it, it sort of threw me a little bit So this doesn't have to stop you from making a design. But if you were writing across this, just be very cognizant that that could throw you. Now one thing that I want you to notice is as I put these designs on here, even these imperfections start to become part of the background. Instead of looking like, oh that's so gross, it starts to give it some kind of a textural element. It is much easier to do this writing if you have a line to follow. And the main thing with parchment and vellum is that you cannot get it too wet all at the same time because it will buckle like crazy even if it's thick. So you want to be mindful about how much water you put on it. So instead of heaping up the water on it, you want to have more of a dry brush technique. Obviously you need enough water on it to move the paint, but just. So I go around the whole thing and I figure out what I want, what color I want each one to be. And this is a very small piece, but if you had a larger piece, you could make it around the entire artwork before you had to come back in with another color on top of it. you'll get a little bit of a raised bump wherever you wet it. And that is part of the magic of parchment and vellum because it creates this sort of um, almost a tattooed effect. Now when it's dry, you can go back over the top of it, but what you can't really do on parchment and vellum is do a whole lot of wet and wet work. It, it just doesn't like that. You can poke at it a little bit more than you can with what you put on paper. Obviously if I were going to gild this, I would do it ahead of time. Watercolor gold, it's just mica pigment stuff. Which works just fine. Fake gold is period. I'm 
changing my mind on that color. So this is actually something that you can do on vellum. You can change your mind on a color. After I let that dry, I can come back in on top and do secondary colors or my white work or whatever I want to. That's a lot of white. Oh my goodness. I don't like that. I'm going to go fix that. I'm going to leave all those just as they are. This one, put some highlights on these guys. Okay, so let's say that you don't like something. What you can do on parchment, just like on watercolor, is that you can make a little targeted blot and blot that off. Okay, because we let that totally dry, it's almost tattooed in. If I wanted to, I could probably scrub most of that pigment off as well. Um, so if I scrub and blot and scrub and blot, that should in theory come off. But hopefully this gives you a good idea of how you can use the material. It is definitely not hard to paint on parchment and vellum. It performs approximately the same as the other papers uh, or substrates. There are some minor differences. In my opinion, it's one of my favorite things to work on. So even taking a very rough piece like this, we actually ended up with a nice little bookmark. So, you know, go ahead, give it a try. See if you like it.